Hey and welcome to Plug and Play EV Winter Edition this time with the white stuff having fallen properly for the first time this winter and cold weather temperatures plunging down below, freezing for the most part. So I thought I'd do a fairly simple test but one which is um, increasingly important at the moment what with the snarl up down in Virginia in winter weather, people on the interstate there for more than a 24 hours. Old memes doing the rounds of what if this was an electric car, what if you got stuck you'd be battery would be dead within an hour or two. Um, we know as EV drivers that just isn't the case, but obviously with people not driving these things themselves, it can be something that spreads quite easily. Does it just sap all your energy and you're only gonna get a few hours most? Um, or is it something that you could quite happily kind of put in a, a lower state to keep the car warm and uh, just conserve energy that way? So that's what I thought we'd do. We didn't get like full 24 hours, of course, but uh, we got full six hours of data, seven hours if you count us kind of checking in towards the end. You'll see what the uh, settings are. We got Talk Pro all set up and kind of monitored this. So we didn't start at a full state of charge. We didn't um, preheat the cabin, anything like that from the wall. So all of this is kind of what if you were at, you know, a certain state of charge, found yourself in a big long line and couldn't move in the uh, freezing cold weather for a decent amount of time. Okay. Energy efficiency when you're dead stop still in cold weather. Let's see what we consume. So not ideal circumstances here. I would have liked to reset this, but uh, didn't prepare for that. So we'll just record what we've started on. This is after just starting the car. Weather overnight has been just below freezing in the kind of high 20s Fahrenheit. And uh, we've had the snow, as you can see. We'll do more testing in really cold weather. This is only kind of around the edge of uh, where things really start to consume energy pretty highly, but uh, there's been no plugging in, no preheating the battery, anything like that. Battery is at, uh, as we'll put up on the screen here, 68-69% uh, state of charge. And it's only drawing this uh, one kilowatt at the moment, less than one kilowatt really. You'll see as I turn on the heater, that'll jump up to maybe six or seven kilowatts. So if that was running for a long time, you know, with a 60 kilowatt hour pack, 66 kilowatt hour pack, that would be pretty quick. You'd, uh, even from full, you'd deplete that within about 10, 11 hours. The uh, reality is though, that starts up pretty high as we'll see here, pushing on the climate controls, get it blasting, put it up to a high temperature, and that'll rise up to about seven, maybe even eight kilowatts because it's really doing some hard work there. You know, it's trying to warm the car up. It's got a lot of work to do using that resistive heater, no heat pump in the bolt. So there will be models that are more efficient than this. Once it gets the cabin temperature up, um, you're going to see this come down. It'll start getting down to maybe three or four kilowatts. And then it settles pretty low, you know, as low as two kilowatts, one or two kilowatts. Maybe in a colder day, you're talking more like two or three kilowatts. But obviously that starts to extend your time out on a full battery to well into a day kind of territory, 20, 24 hours. And uh, that's what we're starting to talk about now. How long would this last? So it's a reasonable kind of state of charge. Not everyone, you know, if you say people aren't always prepared, well, you know, they try and keep their batteries uh, definitely above 50%, maybe closer to 80%. So we're not trying to, you know, stack the deck in favor of EVs here. We're just starting out at a relatively reasonable state of charge. You know, not crazy temperatures, obviously. We'll do that another day when the temperatures get lower. But um, seeing what kind of impact this has, how much energy we use to get it all heated up and nice and toasty, and then what the energy kind of levels out at, and then what that would be over several hours of use. You know, if you're sitting in a, a traffic jam uh, and you can't get off, you can't refuel, can't charge up, and how long are you gonna have before you really need to start making emergency plans? Okay, so we're all set up with Torque Pro. We've got the battery at a temperature of around 34 degrees Fahrenheit, just down here in the bottom left. Not really a big consideration here. There's nothing going to the battery heater right now. And you can see the cabin heater, that just gives us slightly more uh, granular look at uh, how much that's pulling. So 6.5 kilowatts at the moment, but we've hit this 83 kilowatt hours. It's warm in the car. I'm gonna turn this down saying now we're, okay, we're trying to conserve energy a little bit, be a bit more frugal. Turn that down to a, a three, let's say. 
so it's not trying to heat as hard and uh, car's not doing as much work but you can see kind of at the point where we're just trying to keep it comfortable here we've got 83 kilowatt hours so it's a nice round number 15% uh, climate settings and we'll pop on the heated seat here pop on the heated steering wheel we're at 68% state of charge as I said so probably started around 69% and uh, let's see what we use So just coming up to the two o'clock mark. So a bit more than an hour in here, up to 85.3 kilowatt hours. But uh, we've only really burned through a couple of kilowatt hours there over that hour. So even with the initial energy loss, using the uh, cabin heater to really blitz up to the temperature, keeping it warm here is uh, kind of hovering around that uh, two kilowatt, maybe three kilowatts as it gets up a little bit. You see the, um, heated seat starts to ramp down that's just uh, the way the settings are that will start at three but as it uh, warms up and uh, doesn't want to overheat starts to cool down a little bit but we've kept the same settings here the whole time it's been on 72 degrees Fahrenheit it's not crazy numbers we're not going to lose all of our energy within an hour of being in the car so this is all the cabin heater it's in watts so you know you just make it into kilowatts with the 2.8 2.9 right now and that reflects on here because it won't show decimals but you'll see it as a two or a three if it gets past 2.5 kilowatts but it's not sucking up so many kilowatts that this is going to lead us to worry about range for quite a long time you see we're up in the upper half of the pack that's been an hour this is all going to climate settings now we've not seen any activity on the battery heater because there's no need for it to go to work uh, we'll start to see how this goes through the hours obviously it's not going to get much colder here this is about where we're at for the rest of the day until we head into night so if you start at a you know reasonable state of charge we're not even beginning to panic here with this uh you know range still on there depending on how far you've got to go obviously if uh, you're on a long journey you'll need to plan a charging stop uh, after sitting there for a while and maybe using more energy than you expected to go no miles or very few miles if it's slow moving traffic but you know right now plenty of range plenty of energy left in the pack and we could sit here for many more hours which is what we'll try to do see how it goes 87.2 kilowatt hours consumed when we started on 83 so we're just a little above four kilowatt hours consumed over three hours so you can see we're starting to level out think about what we're trying to show here is that you can keep the car comfortable at a point where you're not in any kind of danger in one of these bizarre very rare instances where the traffic is so heavy and the weather is so bad that you're unable to get out trapped on an interstate uh, stuck somewhere where you just can't drive for whatever reason and you need to stay with the car um, you can't abandon it and go somewhere else so the car is your source of heat and again you can keep it at this perfectly comfortable 72 degrees Fahrenheit you could crank up your heated seat a little bit more still got the steering wheel although you don't really need to be holding it if you're not driving of course but again the mileage is barely going down there you know we don't really look at the GOM in this instance because uh, you know it's automatically when you turn the heater off that's going to jump up 15 to 20 miles turn it back on it'll jump uh, or fall back but we're not even down past the 60% mark we started at 68% if you remember and uh, we're at 61% state of charge now 
nightmare scenario that people like to point of, you know, electric car. If all these cars were electric, um, they'd be done within an hour or two. Well, we're past our third hour into our fourth hour here and not even beginning to worry a little bit. All right, four hours in and the light is faltering, but the heating is not. We are up to 41 degrees Fahrenheit in terms of battery temperature. Outside temperature is dipping a little bit here, but still at that consistent right around freezing. We've just passed the clean 89 kilowatt hours. So since we started, seven kilowatt hours used or six kilowatt hours since the heating cabin heat was up to speed and we uh, leveled it off to 72 degrees Fahrenheit. 58% state of charge, more or less. It's 10% charge used over that four hours of sitting and keeping the car comfortable. All right, so not quite at the full next hour mark, but we are getting dark here. Let's uh, say I'm concerned about the dropping temperature uh, and I wanted to just crank up the temperature here. Dark now, let's set it up to 75 degrees. You'll see the heater going to work to make that happen. This is where you need more energy and it starts to hit its max of that 7.5, 8 kilowatt kind of level. You'll see it work hard to get up to that as quickly as it can. And then pretty quickly, I mean, talking maybe 30, 40 seconds there, starting to drop off again. Does its work, gets the temperature cranked up a little bit, and then drops back down to that kind of 2, 2.5 kilowatts. Okay, six hours in. We've dropped below 30 degrees Fahrenheit. As you can see, up to 93 kilowatt hours used. Uh, we have dropped down below 100 miles. That happened a while ago, around 530, 540. But again, this is a bit of a guess. You know, it's uh, something that you could alter by turning the heater off, lowering it a little bit, and then starting driving. A bunch of different things factor into that. So you're not so worried about the actual mileage as much as the state of charge which we can still see is uh, above 50%, you know, closer to 51%. Um, and, you know, in all that time, we started at 69% and we've only lost, we haven't even got down to 20% lost after uh, a good six hours. So quarter of the day, we could do that again, assuming it stays all the same. Uh, and, you know, remember we're heating at 75 degrees here, so we're perfectly comfortable. I could wear a t-shirt in here and be fine. So, you know, the car is certainly a part of the equation, but at this point we'd be six hours in, still have half of the battery pack left, having not started anywhere near full, and having only used 10 kilowatt hours. But this is where I'd kind of draw this one, you know, as a um, summary of quarter of the day, six hours, 20% of the battery pack, you know, starting from that 69%, and probably, you know, perfectly comfortable, not even trying to uh, really conserve stuff here other than not blazing the heater and just having them kind of, uh, you know, car sit in its normal mode. So that's where we are right now. We'll maybe do one more check-in to see how far this goes beneath 50%. Final check-in, seven hours after we started this. Um, so it's been almost two and a half hours on that level and certainly pulling a bit more, we'll notice in the numbers we put up at the end of this, but uh, still comfortable, you could uh, enjoy that heat for a good while longer. Just slowly ticking down, this is going to go way down overnight, so that would be a different test we need to do in the um, single digits Fahrenheit to uh, see how that deeper cold affects it, so part one really. Um, battery temperature, for whatever it's worth, still pulling that kind of upper end of uh, the three kilowatts, two to three kilowatts along most of this, and it's uh, three at the moment. 48% state of charge, so we're only just over 20%. That's one fifth of the pack. And that's about it, really. We could sit in this car for the better part of seven hours uh, at a comfortable um, temperature and ramping it up. Uh, obviously not the coldest of temperatures. There are places where you get much colder than this, but this is what we can do in this particular scenario. But this kind of, this kind of replicates, you know, what people might get into in terms of uh, being stuck for hours. You know, two, three hours, it's not even going to be a question. We could have been down at below 50% uh, 
and still been very comfortable, you know, just getting down into that kind of lower last quarter of the battery pack. Um, and still, you know, if the track, the road started up again, we'd be fine. It should be pretty obvious at this point that even a older tech EV like the Bolt, which has uh, a resistive heater and is fairly energy hungry when it's trying to heat up the cabin, has plenty of energy to, uh, to keep the car warm and keep someone nice and safe through any kind of emergency that is, uh, you know, foreseeable. Obviously the caveats are things like, well, this was down in Virginia, uh, just a freak event that was over 24 hours. People had to sleep in their cars. Once you get to that situation and you're beyond this kind of six or seven hours that we tested, you're into kind of emergency territory anyway. You know, if you haven't filled up your gas car, you're in trouble. If you didn't charge your battery, you're in trouble. If you don't have supplies like blankets, gloves, hand warmers, food, that kind of thing again you're maybe not in trouble because you can go a bit longer than a day but still it's going to be something that's on your mind so that's a lot of preamble just to basically say here's a quick test did it in our driveway relatively cold weather lots of snow and kind of timely with the uh events down in virginia and trying to kind of bat away some of those myths so let me know what you think in the comments how does winter feel with your ev obviously range loss is one piece but uh, do you feel confident that in any kind of scenario where you're staying still it will be able to have a mode where you can just just put it down into low energy consumption and ride it out. Um, what are other concerns that you have in winter or do you think EVs handle just as well or better than their uh, combustion equivalents? Always interested in your opinions down in the comments, let us know and thanks for watching as always. Happy winter!